While many people may think of the Third Crusade as a long and bloody war between King Richard the Lionheart and his crusaders versus Saladin and his Saracens, two armies of two different religions fighting for territory and power, there was a third party in the mix. A neutral party, an underrated one for that matter, that lurked in the shadows but was just as, if not more dangerous than the armies of Richard and Saladin. They were called the Assassins, an order of killers whose very name was feared by both Christians and Muslim soldiers alike. Their leader was Rashid al-Din Sinan, the old man on the mountain. With the few resources found about Sinan, it is said that he was born in Basra, Iraq, somewhere between 1132 and 1135, but moved to Alamut when he got older in order to train with the assassins in which their headquarters was located. After spending a few years training in the arts of assassination, Sinan worked his way up to leadership and eventually became the master of all assassins during the Third Crusade, a perfect time to be as there were sure to be targets for Sinan to eliminate. By this time, the assassins reached a number of 60,000 and their stronghold was located at the edge of the Syrian desert atop a large mountain, which Sinan would overlook the expanse of land, calling it his Eagle's Nest, a term which may have inspired the eagle vision in the Assassin's Creed games. A description of Sinan from the book Warriors of God by James Rustin Jr. describes Sinan as brilliant, clairvoyant, ruthless, deceitful, pious, mystical, and ascetic, with eyes fierce as meteors, a physician's power of healing, and a tyrant's power of awesome destruction. The stories of his natural gifts and his evil were legion. So great were his powers of telepathy, it was said that he could answer a letter without ever reading its contents. End quote. To Sinan, murdering political figures wasn't just an act of violence. He wanted people to notice it thoroughly. He wanted assassinations to be seen as a work of art. Assassinations proved to be an excellent fear tactic to Sinan. It protected his independence and prevented any form of rebellion towards him. Along with his assassins came his Fedai, loyal soldiers who would sacrifice their lives for the greater good of the assassins. They were proof of the undying loyalty Sinan's assassins had for him. Only through the wisdom of the Fedai lay the path of purification, enlightenment, and paradise. One story tells that Sinan ordered two Fedayi to jump off a large tower in front of a crusader leader in order to show the leader just how loyal his followers were, asking if the crusader leader would do the same to his soldiers. So if you're familiar with the leap of faith in the Assassin's Creed games, oh, his story may have inspired it. Another story revolving around Sinan's Fedayi was when he summoned his assassins to his chamber showing the head of a slain assassin sitting on top of a golden plate. Sinan then asked the head if the fallen had wished to return to earth. The head suddenly opened his eyes and said that he truly is in the paradise that was promised to him. The assassins, shocked and scared, and saw the head remove the gold plate and crawl out of a hole in the floor, only for Sinan to cut off his head with his sword. This story can be more proof that even on the brink of their demise, the Ferrayi wanted to go out in style and not in some old bed. Sinan was a Muslim of Shia Islam, and because of Saladin who believed in Sunni Islam, the majority of Muslims followed that branch of Islam, decreasing the numbers of Shia Muslims, leaving Sinan having a bitter attitude towards Saladin. Unlike King Richard and his crusaders who spent the majority of the Third Crusade trying to take down Saladin, Sinan was one of the very few, if not the only person, to nearly claim the life of the Sultan. Sinan tried assassinating Saladin two times. The first was in 1174, where the assassins were only a few feet from the Sultan, but was struck down by his guards. The second was when an assassin, disguised as one of Saladin's guards, tried impaling his dagger into the Sultan's skull. Although because Saladin wore a mailed headdress underneath his turban, he survived and managed to take down the assassin. Even though Saladin was angry at Sinan and the assassins and he even tried to invade their mountains, he was still paranoid, wondering when the assassins would strike next, as time went on. The assassins were thought to have left him alone until one day, the Sultan found a dagger and hotcakes underneath his pillow. Saladin finally decided it was time to move elsewhere, and 
Eventually, both Sinan and the Sultan left each other alone for good. Although it is thought that the Christians, specifically the Templars, were enemies with Sinan and his assassins, this was not entirely true. As a matter of fact, the monks of the Templars and the assassins got along really well, as they both were fanatically faithful to a specific order and would do anything to make that order succeed. Assassinating a member of the order was pointless anyway, as the Grand Master would be the one chosen for members already within the order. There was one instance where the Templars and the assassins did have a conflict, and that was when the assassins killed Raymond II. In an angry response, the Templars killed a number of Muslims that weren't even associated with the assassins at all. Following this quarrel, the assassins decided to pay the Templars to leave them alone, and since then, there has been no recorded feud between the two factions. As decades passed, Sinan realized that Shia Islam had decreased more and more and even decided to take an interest in Christianity by reading and understanding the Bible. Sinan was open to Christianity, but only if the Templars would lift the burden of his annual tribute. Because of Sinan's studies with Christianity, people of Islam started to despise him and because he was only toying with the idea of Christianity, Sinan became a heretic on both sides. At this point, everyone started becoming more intimidated by Sinan as he was seen as a dangerous, fanatical leader. No matter what religion Sinan followed, his assassins stayed loyal to him regardless. Sinan's last assassination was in 1191 when he was contracted to kill Conrad of Montferrat. Although King Richard was not the one to put out the contract, Conrad's death helped with the Lionheart's goals in the Third Crusade and at this point, Sinan finally decided it was time to conclude his career as a master of the assassins. The person who put out the contract on Conrad still remains unknown. Sinan passed away in 1193 in Masayaf, but the assassin order still went strong and it's because of Sinan and his order that the word assassin is still engraved in the minds of people today. Thanks to video games like Assassin's Creed or even movies such as John Wick, Rashid al-Din Sinan will forever be the legacy of the assassins. Thank you for watching this video and supporting my love for history and I'll see you on the next one.